I didn't choose this town by chance. It's so ancient. The devil himself appeared. Hey guys, welcome to Dramatically Expatic. Welcome to Bobbio, a lovely medieval town in Emilia Romagna. If you know me, you know that I love exploring my region and I really, really enjoy exploring uh, these small villages, small towns. And it's been a long time since I last saw uh, a village like this in Emilia Romagna. And I'm so excited to come here today and to bring you with me because for a very long time I wanted to come here Finally, we're here and we are ready to discover this place. So let's go with me. Interestingly enough, even though Bobbio is located quite far from uh, bigger cities, it's very lively and vibrant. As I said, like, you know, you have this relaxed vibe, but also at the same time, it's so vibrant. That's, uh, that's really nice, I like it. attention if you plan on visiting uh, small towns in Italy many restaurants and cafes and shops will be closed on random days like today is Wednesday and this restaurant is closed every Wednesday and I don't even understand this system because wherever you go you'll find uh, different closure days like rest days in different towns and also inside one town the same town there will be different restaurants closed on different days so be ready for that and be prepared that even if you're going on a weekday it doesn't matter something might be closed another very characteristic thing of every uh, single italian village or small town the restaurant here is called senza fretta which means no rush and no rush could be a motto of every Italian village because people are not rushing. People are just relaxing and enjoying their lives. And if you want a slower, steadier pace of life, if you want to uh, relax and take a break for at least one day, this place is for you. St. Columbanus is like the patron saint of Bobbio and he was a real person who arrived here from Ireland in the 7th century. Attention guys, he arrived all the way to Bobbio from Ireland. Uh, I think that was a very long way for him. However, uh, when he arrived here, he uh, founded this abbey, the St. Columbanus Abbey, which is uh, still functioning today. It's still a very important point in the city and it has always been historically, especially during the Middle Ages, this abbey was quite powerful and um, impressive. Yeah, I really like the history of it. And most interestingly, you, my fellow literature lovers, you probably heard of one of the most famous Umberto Eco's works in the name of Rose. And uh, according to some voices, the uh, AB, the monastery, and the book was partly based on the image of this AB. Actually, a few very interesting points here that I want to show you because I didn't choose this town by chance, I chose it deliberately and I'm taking you to one of the most peculiar places here. Let's go! Paul 
Monte Gobo or the Hunchbacked Bridge, also known as the Devil's Bridge here, is one of the main attractions here in Bobbio. And this is the bridge that connects one side of the river Trebio to another side. You can't really see the river because the water is very, very low since it's really hot today. However, this river is actually a wild one and during the Middle Ages it used to flood these areas and so people needed this bridge to connect the two parts. When Saint Columbanus arrived here to Bobbio, according to the legend, he wanted to construct this bridge so he can uh, preach to the people living on the other side. And that's when the devil himself appeared in front of uh, the priest and offered him a deal to construct this bridge in one night only in exchange for the first living soul to pass by this bridge. Saint Columbanus accepted the deal and so the devil summoned all of uh, the various demons to construct this bridge and that's why the bridge is constructed in this very uh, weird, strange way because the demons, according to the legend, were all of different sizes and heights. And the morning after, the devil uh, was waiting on the other side for the first passerby and Saint Columbanus, who was a wise man, sent his old and sick dog who was dying instead of a living person. The devil obviously was enraged and he returned back to hell with this bridge staying here for centuries and connecting people, connecting the sides of the river. Some sources actually credit this bridge for being uh, of the Roman period and I think it's totally possible because the true origin of this bridge is unknown since it's so ancient. I love how ancient it is and I love, uh, you know, being in close contact with all the ancient stuff and all the ancient architectural landmarks. But I also feel like this unknown origin is also responsible for uh, the amount of legends surrounding this bridge. I think it's wonderful, even if you're not a researcher, scientist, just to discover all of these legends and maybe dig deeper to the origin. Even if you don't know where it's coming from and how old is it, it's still amazing. Guys, look at all the goodness that we've got from a local shop. I will show you here. Look here, the sweets. And more sweets with plum and with apricot. Some biscuits. And some savory cakes, because Italian savory cakes are always so good. So your lunch can be done like this. This is so interesting, guys. Once you go a little bit further into the mountains in the same region, you see a very different architecture. Look at this cute street with all of these houses. In this, uh, I'm not an expert, but it feels to me like this is typical uh, Eponine style because whenever I travel in the Eponines, in these villages and small towns, I see these kind of houses and I personally love them so much. And look at this covered passages here. It looks so beautiful. And once again, I cannot marvel enough at how tastefully and beautifully Italians decorate their streets and their houses. Look at all these flowers and uh, colorful windows. This is lovely. I love these uh, towns for this character and for this beauty. One more thing to be a fan of Italian towns and cities, guys. Wherever you go, you'll find this water fountain. So once again, I remind you to always carry your usable water bottle with you because in most places you can have access to drinkable water, free and easy access to drinkable water. Italian towns are perfect for travelers, especially for conscious travelers who want to live 
some positive impact on the environment. Every town, guys, even a small town has its own castle. That's a rule in Italy, I swear. Guys, I have no idea what this fruit is. It looks kind of like apples, but I'm not really sure if these are apples. Uh, but it's growing in someone's yard, but you can actually see it from the street. And I think it's so cute and lovely. You know, this vibe of being in a countryside when being in a small town, that's what I'm here for. And that's it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this little tour of Bobbio, which is a wonderful town where time stands still. You really have this feeling of a time machine here, but also so perfectly preserved. It's so clean and nice and it's just a very pleasant place to spend a day a bit further from the city and the chaos of the city. If you're new here, guys, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. Please hit the bell button down below, especially if you love hitting buttons. And as always, don't forget to put a thumbs up, comment and share this video with your friends if you want me to make more videos like this. And if you want to help me support this channel, don't be shy and hit the thanks button down below. Thank you guys for being here and enjoy your day.